everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful Easter weekend, no matter where you are, or how you're celebrating through all of this craziness. I'm jumping in live here actually um, to film quite a different video than I normally do or would. And to be completely honest with you, this video has taken me three, if not more weeks to actually sit down and share with you. Um, there have been a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings, a lot of things that I've been wanting to share about this craziness that we are all going through. And there's been a couple reasons why I've held back from filming this video right here, right now. So I'm, I am excited to share with you what I want to share with you. And I know that this is really important for so many people to hear this message. And I've had to get over some of my own mental blocks to be able to sit right here in front of you today and, and actually record this video. So one of the reasons that I held back was and is the fact that I know what I'm going to share with you may piss you off. This may be um, some you know, disconnect between what I'm sharing and what you believe in. And that's okay. I had to get to a place where I was comfortable pushing the people pleasing aside and speaking my truth. And I really hope that this inspires those of you who are sitting on the fence with sharing your truth, sharing your beliefs, even though you know it might piss people off. So I am welcoming that right now. If you do not agree with what I'm about to share, that's totally okay. I still love you. I still believe that you are absolutely entitled to your own beliefs. And I just ask that we all go out in the world and share more and more love and more and more understanding and respect for everybody who is allowed to have their own beliefs and their own backgrounds and their own education. And I think that is, you know, the important thing for me to stay, say before I dive in today, uh, because there's a lot going on. And I also really, really want to acknowledge that obviously I'm not a, you know, a scientist or a professional vaccine studier. Um, obviously not. I do know a lot. I do know what I feel and I know what feels right to me. And this is what I kind of want to dive into today. I also, um, another caveat, I also just want you to know that, um, you know, we're all managing this in our different ways, right? We're all getting through in our own ways. And that's perfect. That's great. I also want to acknowledge all these acknowledgements. I do want to really acknowledge that I am very, very lucky. And I do not let a day go by where I don't give gratitude for the life that I've created for myself. Yes, I created this. Okay, I created a life where I chose to live in nature, in the woods, where my and, and to, to have my business and run my life online so that I can, you know, live the lifestyle that I wanted to live. So I understand that I am not one of the people who have lost their jobs. I am not one of the people who, you know, are stuck in a tiny apartment in a big city. I understand that I'm very, very grateful and very lucky. I mean, I don't really believe in luck because I created this reality for myself very much on purpose. And that is one of the many things that's helping me stay calm and centered through all of this. So that's really what I want to share with you today. Now, diving into the good stuff that I want to share is how I've managed over the last, you know, it's, I guess it's been probably about four weeks now that there's been this huge epidemic of panic and fear and heaviness and all the emotions that people are feeling out there in the world. And, and trust me, I'm, I'm feeling some of it too. But I've been really noticing that I've managed to stay very calm and even happy and hopeful and optimistic. I'm throwing those words in there because I want you to know if you're feeling these things too, that it's okay. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. And I just want to share with you why um, why that is for me, because I think a lot of you are going to need to hear this message. And a lot of you are going to whether whether or not, you know, you're you're in a good place now or you're not in a good place. Please stay open and stay stay aware of this, because something that you probably don't know about me, because I don't talk about it a lot or as in depth as I would like to. And I'm going to start is that I'm actually a very spiritual person. And you can see behind me, this is my morning meditation center <laughs> here in my office. And I spend a lot of time here meditating, doing yoga, um, you know, using my crystals, saging. 
lots of different things that I've built in over the last, I'd say, especially the last two or three years have really deepened into my spiritual practice. And, you know, if that word scares you, that's okay, <laughs> but stay open to this um, because that is why I've been able to stay so calm and hear me out. So the last few years, I have become very aware of my own limitations um, around control. So this is the discussion I want to have with you today, because this is the work that I've done and the reason I'm able to stay so calm right now. So as I started realizing in myself that there was this, this need for control, I've always been a competitive person. I've always had more of the masculine energy versus the, fe the, the feminine energy, you know, in terms of wanting to plan and wanting to know a structure and you should see my spreadsheets. And I've had a lot of that energy, the, the very um, structured, very competitive sort of energy. And I realized that a few years ago, and I very intentionally began this journey of balancing my energies and really learning to go more with the flow and be more feminine. And in that process, I've done a lot of personal, very deep internal work around actually letting go of my need for control. And... I'm curious if any of you can relate with this because I know from lots of conversations that I have with my clients and with other people around me is that so many of us really feel that pull and that need for control um, in our lives. And it shows up in different ways in our relationships, in our job, um, in the way we eat and how we exercise, you know, in, in everything. And for me, I was noticing that it was the reason for my anxiety. I've struggled with anxiety ever since I was a child. I remember having very debilitating uh, separation anxiety from my parents when I was younger and going to therapy for that, um, lots of things. And that's carried on with me through adulthood. And I started realizing these patterns in myself through the spiritual work that I was doing. And over time, really putting my attention and focus on, on shifting that for myself. Because what I was seeing is that my need to feel in control of every situation was not supporting me, not one bit. It was causing me anxiety and stress on a daily business, or daily basis, especially while I was growing my business. It was, you know, constant, you know, me trying to plan and the universe having other plans for me. And I was constantly being let down or bumped up against this reminder that I don't have control over anything. So over the last couple of years, and this, this is the depth of the message that I really want you to feel into today, because this is the you know, for me, this has been the answer. And this has been the savior through all of this for me, because over the last, I'd say two years, my word of the year, I don't know if anyone else out there picks a word of the year has been trust. And to me, that's the opposite of control. So trusting in whatever makes sense to you, right? If you want to trust in God, or you want to trust in Mother Earth, or you want to trust in Buddha, or you want to trust in the universe. For me, the universe is the word that I use. And in letting go of my quote unquote fake need for control, I've really become to embody and feel and, and understand that we as human beings do not have one ounce of control over anything. And that took me a couple years to be able to actually feel and trust because I've done this inner work of leaning into trusting that the universe has a bigger picture, that the universe has a bigger plan, that mother nature knows what she's doing, even though it sucks for me. Things are not going my way. You know, I didn't get what I wanted, um, but still leaning into, okay, there's a bigger picture here. There's something else that I'm not seeing and that's okay. So, why I'm sharing this with you is because this is exactly why and how I've been able to stay so calm. And I'm actually, and this is the piece that a lot of people might get pissed off about, so I welcome that, but I'm actually extremely hopeful. I deeply believe that what is going on in our world right now is the wake up call that so many of us need, so many people need to wake up from the dreamlike state that they're walking around in, going to the jobs they hate, um, you know, hanging out with the people that don't really spark joy in their lives. And I'm really hopeful and optimistic that the universe knows what she's doing. 
and something's going on out there that we're needing either this reminder as human beings that we are not in control of anything and that our lives are short so we should make the best of them and that you know we you know we create our own realities so there's so much in this that i'm very actually nerve sighted this is this is my favorite word right i'm a little bit nervous because it's still unnerving to not know the future right but we never will and and i'm excited so that's kind of turning everything on its head from from so much of what we're hearing out there in terms of you know our fear and people dying and people losing their jobs and 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 please believe me like I, i'm not saying that that's great i'm saying that definitely sucks and it's hard and i understand that a lot of people are in a lot of pain but the thing about the bigger picture is that pain and suffering are the the way we change I've seen this in my own life when when I am really deep in 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 struggle or in challenge my business and my relationships when I am in physical pain that is often the catalyst I needed we need to actually take action to make big change I mean just using the example of when I worked in my office job that was sucking my soul I finally got to a point where I was in enough emotional mental physical pain that I finally quit and I finally went after my dreams. It was that struggle that pushed me into doing that. So whether, you know, wherever you are right now, you know, in terms of your job, in terms of your life, in terms of your finances, your relationships, just know that if if it sucks right now, number 1, it won't always stay that way, and number 2, maybe that's the thing that you needed to really do something different in your life, to really shake things up, to make you take a second look, make you stand back and look at the trajectory of where your life is headed and make the changes you need. Because when you come at it from that perspective, that is where you can become optimistic. That is where you can become, and you can actually become the person that you're meant to become. So because of my deep work over the last few years around uh, trusting in in whatever power bigger than me and trusting that it knows what it's doing and trusting that I'm on the path that I need to be on even though it's really difficult sometimes okay I don't live an easy life either I mean what you see online you may think I do but I definitely have my struggles and there are some big struggles that I've dealt with over the last couple of years and I haven't necessarily shared online so please be aware of that as well I'm not here you know, being all, and I also acknowledge I'm very privileged, right? But I'm not, um, I'm not undermining what you're going through. I really just want to be here as a beacon of support and, and hope because what's actually going on out there is our call, is our chance to, to take a look inside. And what you see, you may not like, and that's okay because now you get the chance to change that. So. I mean, all of this is, is such a, just a reminder for you that, you know, and I hear a lot of conversations going on out there around, you know, this fear and this panic and this anxiety and stress that so many are feeling and maybe you're feeling right now is based off of not having control, you know, of not feeling like you're in control and not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow and not knowing if you're going to lose your job or you'll ever get a job again, or if, or if you'll be kicked out of your place or, you know, not knowing or if you're going to get sick obviously right it's this not knowing it's sort of very ungrounded and very unnerving to be in this sort of limbo of the unknown right not understanding what the future is going to be but the funny piece is we never have that control even when you had a job and you were doing your daily routine and everything kind of looked the same you still didn't have control over your life and you may not have noticed it, it might have felt like this false sense of control, and this is what I've experienced and why I'm sharing it with you. You know, nothing's really changed. It's just this reminder that we never really have control. We're not the puppeteers here, okay? We're not. We are little 
people, little itty bitty people on this little itty bitty planet. And there's so much outside of us that we'll never understand the forces of nature, the forces of the universe um, at play. And as soon as you can begin to lean into that and accept that, you will be in a much freer space mentally. And that's where I am. I feel happy most days. I'm really calm. Yes, I'm a bit annoyed that I can't go out and hug people and visit with people. Um, but that's, you know, what's coming up for me. So if you're really struggling with this, I really just want to share with you, you know, this is your chance and your invitation to do this deeper work and to lean into trusting as hard as it is that there's a bigger picture here and that you're probably never going to know what that bigger picture is. And that is real trust. And it's taken me years to get here. And it's actually very interesting because over the last couple of weeks, as I've been kind of waiting to share this video, I've really felt into well, like, why am I, why am I so calm every day? Why am I feeling so grounded? Why am I feeling so level? And, you know, this for me is validation that the work that I've been doing has worked. The meditation, the ceremonies I've done, the plant medicines, the, the conversations that I've had with people, the retreats I've gone on, um, you know, the, the inquisitive work, the journaling, all of the personal development, spiritual development things that I've done over the last few years have led me to this. And for me, I'm noticing, wow, like it's worked. It's kind of, it's worked because this is my goal is to get to this place where I can be emotionally level. I can be a emotionally stable and I can show up in that way for, for anyone who needs that right now. Who any, whoever needs me reaching down with my hand, pulling you up from wherever you're feeling right now. So, you know, don't let this be, um, what's the word? <laughs> Please know that you are very, very much in the right to feel whatever you're feeling. You know, obviously I'm a, a big proponent of feeling the feels, all the emotions that are coming up for you. I'm not gonna deny, I've definitely had a couple days over the last few weeks where I felt all of the collective heaviness, but it wasn't mine. That was me feeling as a feeler out, you know, the people around me at the grocery store, out in public, online, and it wasn't mine deep down, I'm calm and centered because of this work that I've done. And because of my, you know, understanding of me never being in control of anything. And, and really, my practices in staying grounded and staying connected with myself and, and trusting that there's something bigger. So this is this is real surrender. This is surrendering to life as it flows. And, and this is really cool for me to, to witness in myself. Because as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, I really struggled with feeling unbalanced between my energies, you know, my masculine and feminine energy. And this is very much a huge shift for me in, in flowing with life and in flowing into my feminine energy, which I'm really grateful for. And I am really hopeful that, that this is resonating with you, that this is something that is um, going to be supportive for you, whether or not you agree with me. Uh, but I wanted to to, to come in here and, and share where I'm at um, and share that, you know, the truth of what I'm feeling and what I'm deeply believing is that there's a bigger picture here. And it sucks. Absolutely. It's horrible that people are suffering and people are dying. And, you know, I, I definitely acknowledge that. But I also acknowledge that at the end of this, this is going to be good for us. I believe that. I wholeheartedly believe that once this shifts and passes, we are going to be stronger human beings. We are going to be more awake and conscious human beings, which is my hope. We're going to be more aware of the importance of looking after our bodies and nourishing ourselves with real whole foods instead of getting to a disease state where we're worried for our lives. One of the reasons I'm so calm is because I know that my body can handle anything. And, and I'm going to say this, I honestly do not care either way if I get this virus. Okay, that might be really shocking for a lot of people. I don't. I honestly welcome it. I know that my body can handle it. And I know not a lot of people are in that state. And a lot of people um, might have, you know, it's been years and years of, of developing, you know, a compromised immune systems. And I get it. Everyone's in a different situation. But on the big scale of things, we have as a society, eaten ourselves into disease. This is the huge epidemic that nobody talks about. And now 
we're being faced with that. Those who are sick, who have eaten themselves into obesity, diabetes, cancer, you know, all of these diseases that are proven linked to our diet and our lifestyle, you know, we've gotten to that place. And now, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, those with weakened immune systems are now having to pass on to the next life. And I don't, I don't want us to live like that. I want this to be a wake up call for all of us to actually take our health seriously and to see the risk of not looking after ourselves, not supporting our immune systems, not supporting our bodies in a way that can help us ward off these things, no matter what age we are. I believe we can, right? And maybe this is the wake up call we all need. So I, you know, this is one of the things that I've been playing with in my head. And one of the reasons why I'm so optimistic is that, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping that this is, uh, fingers crossed, hoping that this is the wake up call we need, not only for, you know, really releasing control and getting out of the anxiety and stress and trusting in something bigger, connecting deeper with ourselves, reevaluating our priorities and our values in life. I'm hoping everyone's in quarantine doing that, but also reevaluating how we're looking after our bodies and our temples, right? And and using this huge challenge that we're facing on a planetary level as a catalyst to, to make some big, scary, amazing changes in your life. So that's my invitation for all of you today. And that's what I hope that you get out of this. And I would love to keep this conversation going. And I know that there are so many of you who, who needed to hear this message, which is why I'm sharing it, who needed to hear that there's hope and there's trust and that I'm here being optimistic about where this is going to lead us. And I want you to get there too, you know, if you want to, obviously. Um, and please help me, you know, spread this message and help me, you know, help me help more people if this is the message that you need. So I know, again, full circle back to the beginning, I know that maybe some of what I said might have pissed you off, might have frustrated you, might have really come up against an old belief that you're struggling with, um, it might have really bumped heads with that fear that you've identified with over the last few weeks, and that's okay. That is absolutely okay. And I want you to know that I love you, and I'm here for you, and I absolutely support whatever belief system you are holding on so strongly with, but I really do hope that you're able to open your mind and welcome in new ideas, welcome in new thoughts, and remember that we don't have control over anything, whether or not we think we do. And when we can really come together, support each other, spread love, connect deeper with ourselves, this is how we're gonna get through this. And this is how we're gonna come out of the other end stronger than ever. So that's my hope for all of us. And um, I hope that you have an amazing rest of your Easter weekend. And thank you so much for tuning in. I cannot wait to see you again soon.